Why was the Yezu FT-857D actually discontinued? How does it compare to other radios that are currently on the market, whether they be the same thing, kind of similar to the same thing, or a cheap Chinese knockoff that's not really even the same thing? I got a few thoughts on this. This is from a Reddit article, so check this out. As you guys know, I very much enjoy browsing the Amateur Radio subreddit on the Reddit website, and this one came across my attention today, actually, while I was looking up two or three other articles that I wanted to make videos about. This one was titled, Why the Yezu FT-857 Was Discontinued, Why Was, and this from comes from Da Happy Goose. He doesn't give his call sign, and that's okay. Most people don't give their call sign. This was posted three hours ago at the time of this recording. So it's a good uh, it's a good article, and there's some really good discussion in here. That's mostly what I want to talk about today. Is there something like it in size and power on the market today? And I will get, the short answer is sort of, and I will get to that here in a minute. So let's go down here. So this is from Vince, VE6LK. We know Vince. He's a good dude. Source, I work for a dealer. Yezu could no longer get parts manufactured for the radio. The FT-891 is the nearest replacement. There aren't any 100-watt HF, VHF, UHF radios in a compact form factor currently on the market. And the larger form factor is the 981 and 7100. So a small pause here. So when I said uh, so, the answer is sort of, what I meant was the, IC, the ICOM IC7100 is really kind of the only radio on the market today that fits this bill of compact 100-watt HF, VHF, UHF, all mode. Okay, so the thing sometimes that people miss about the FT-857, FT-897, FT-991, the ICOM IC7000, 7100, nothing past that for ICOM, is the fact that not only does it do VHF and UHF, 2 meters and 70 centimeters, but it does all mode on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. How many times have we been talking about we want an, a new all mode? radio from Yezu these days. Okay, currently Yezu, the only Yezu all-mode VHF, UHF radio on the market right now in production is the 991A. And it's really a desktop radio. It's not really made to go in your vehicle. So it's not the same class of radio. It's not the same category of radio as the 857 or the even the 818, which is QRP. But uh, even, the, um, even the 891, which is HF only, Okay, but the same form factor as the 857. So don't forget the fact that VHF, UHF on these radios we're talking about today are more than just FM. Another comment here says, discontinued parts is almost always the reason. The refresh cycle on ham radio is so slow that parts availability is almost always the driving factor for model turnover. You can see the classic and terribly executed example for the 817 and 818 debacle. The 817 used a lot of components that weren't manufactured anymore, so they attempted to an incremental update bumped up the price, but didn't bother bumping up the specs to match. This was this is basically true. Back in um, back when the 818 came out, it was six watts instead of five watts, like the 817, and there wasn't really much difference to it. And I remember people some grumbling in the market about that. I never owned an 817. I do have an 818, but I only bought it when they announced it was being discontinued, and it's sitting in a bag right there. And I've used it one time, and I haven't picked it up since then. But I'm not going to get rid of it. But I do have one. So he goes on to say, they totally misread the market uh, and Ellicraft and Icon teamed up to straight steal their lunch and vastly superior specs at a price that was close enough to leave Yezu without much of a market segment. Okay, so I replied to this comment. This, this next comment guy, guy he says, uh, this makes sense pretty much. I replied to this comment. I'm going to show you this, this reply here. But bear in mind, he's talking about the QRP world. Okay, or he should be. He should be talking about the QRP world. Because he's talking about the 817, 818. So my reply to that was, Yezu was way too busy taking an ICOM and Elecraft's place on the Sherwood list with non-QRP HF radios. <laughs> Which is not untrue. Yezu currently holds the top three or four spots as far as receiver sensitivity in a controlled test environment, which is what Sherwood Reports does. But Yezu has some of the best receivers out there on their current HF models. The uh, FTDX-10, the FT-710, the FT-101D, and the FT-101MP. So, okay. So we're talking about... And Yezu has been behind the eight ball for a while. So Yezu makes some awesome products, and I've been saying this for a long time. But they're, they've been behind, in my opinion, they've been behind the eight ball for a while with QRP radios. So I see what this guy is saying, but... He's talking, he should have said in the QRP world, because he's like, oh yeah, I come and Elcraft came in and took over Yezu's lunch. No, they didn't. 
No, they didn't. In the QRP world, they did with this one model of radio, the FT-818. Sure, yes. Yeah, because the 705 and the KX-3 and the KX-2 are better, newer, more updated radios than the 818. I get that. Yes, I agree. I own a KX-3 and a 705, and they are better radios than the 818, in my opinion. So, yes. But you kind of left out the whole HF 100-watt desktop or portable field radio in that statement. This guy right here uh, did not see my interview with John Crook when the FT-5D came out. He says, I'm led to believe that this is the reason the VX-8DR and the FT-3 handholds were obsolete while leaving the VX-6 in production. That's absolutely true. He is correct. When the FT-5D came out, I had John on the show, and we were talking about um, how the FT-3, because the FT-3 came out pre-COVID, and the FT-5 came out somewhat post-COVID, shortly after COVID started. And the reason, and this came straight from John Crook at Yezu, he said the reason for the upgrade from the, th for the discontinuation so quickly after the 3, because the 3 hadn't been out but a couple of years, is because they couldn't get parts anymore for it. With all the COVID uh, shutdowns, with, all, with the factory fire at that one place in Japan, uh, there was a lot of limited parts availability for all the ham radio manufacturers, ICOM, Kenwood, and Yezu. Kenwood stepped out of the game for just a little bit. And the FT3 was discontinued, the FT5 was come up, and th so this is exactly the reason why, because they couldn't get parts for it anymore. I'm always surprised that the FT60R is still in production because that radio is very old. In fact, that radio is so old it uses nickel cadmium NICAD batteries from the product. When you buy a brand new one in a box, it comes with Yezu NICAD batteries. You can get some lithium ion batteries for it on Amazon, but <laughs> yeah, that's an old radio, but it's still in production. So scrolling down here, nothing like it does full power on HF VHF and same form factor. Probably wasn't profitable enough to keep in production despite being a great little rig. More capabilities means more production costs. I don't think, I don't believe this statement to be true. I don't have any evidence, but I don't believe this statement to be true. I believe these all-in-one rigs like the IC706 and the IC7000, the IC7100, the FT8, the 818 was also an all-mode on VHF, UHF. It was HF, VHF, UHF, all-mode, but QRP. The 857, the 897, the 991A, all of these rigs fit that bill of HF, VHF, UHF, all-mode. So I could be wrong on this. I could be wrong on the fact that he thinks that uh, it wasn't profitable enough to keep it in production, but I don't think that's correct because so many people really, really like that radio. So many people buying them. The used market prices went sky high when the A57 was discontinued and I just I don't see this as being the case this is a long rebuttal to that in this case it's almost certainly they couldn't keep up with parts needed anymore which has been mentioned earlier and he talks in this about receiver sensitivity and then uh, this the original poster he says so is receiver sensitivity a thing I asked because I've been waiting for the FT1X to come out but I saw the A57 on Facebook Marketplace for about 650. It's a good price for that radio, and was tempted. I'm new to him, so I'm trying to learn how to judge whether something's a good deal or not, and what I actually need. Okay, well, first of all, number one original poster to Happy Goose, the FTX1F is going to be a QRP radio, 10 watts maximum. The A57 is a 100 watt radio. So again, we're not really comparing apples to apples in that comparison. My answer would be get both, but of course, you may not be able to afford both. Is the receiver sensitivity on a new radio going to be better than an older radio? Absolutely. And this guy, this Hamster Dave guy, replies, he says, so is receiver sensitivity a thing? Absolutely. And he is 100% correct. Receiver sensitivity is more important than almost anything in your rig. People always want to go high power. You come in from the CB radio world. Well, we want to put 1,000 watts or 5,000 or 10,000 watts into it. That's great. But if you can't hear the person that's trying to come back to you, or if it's just all noise because the filtering on your radio sucks, like the G90, then what good is it? So receiver sensitivity is actually one of the... It's a toss-up between receiver sensitivity and uh, antenna quality, in my opinion. I think that antenna quality and... Or antenna height and quality and receiver sensitivity is probably the most important thing in your rig, far more greater than how much power the rig puts out and how many functions the menu has and how big the screen is and how good the waterfall is and if it has an internal tuner and these kind of things. These are all add-on features that are usable and enjoyable and, and good to have, but they are not nearly as important as receiver sensitivity or antennas for a good station. Now, speaking of antennas, I will plug today's sponsor, which is Mezzi and Poloni Coax. Some of the best coax on the market today for portable field ops in parks on the air, summits on the air, 
or just at your home shack is from Mezzi and Peloni. You can save a 10% discount on all of their coax tools and accessories at the link in the description below with the coupon code of HR2Cables. They make some of the best coax from Italy. And when I go to Parks on the Air with my 857 or with my QRP rig, I'm always feeding it with Mezzi and Peloni coax. So check out the link in the description below and thank them for sponsoring this video. Absolutely, but far more important in my opinion, for the mobile rigs is modern DSP and noise reduction. I don't think that I necessarily agree with that. He thinks that receiver sensitivity is less important than DSP and noise reduction. I don't think that that's true. But I see I see where he's coming from. Okay. The A57D's DSP is a joke by modern standards. Yes, this is because the radio is older. Even its day, it was mediocre. You'll find these features very handy if you live in an apartment or a suburb with a lot of noise makers. And he's correct on that. Although I think receive sensitivity is probably a little bit better a little bit more important than DSP and noise reduction. But we could probably argue about that one on an entire hour and a half live stream one night. We'll see. So th right down here, oh yes, it's a thing. Here's a link to the Sherwoods Labs receiver test data page. Good on you, Mr. B. Servies, because uh, I mentioned Sherwood reports in um, my uh, comment down here that I'm about to talk about. Uh, ND8D says, for the same reason the 817 and 897 were discontinued, the design was from 2003 and the components were end of life. Yezu had to keep updating designs. My guess is something major went end of life and decided to pull the plug. Well, that's basically what everyone is saying. So going on here, and, and I'm, not, I'm not reading all these comments. I'm skipping over a bunch, and I'm going to read my comment here about uh, grifty YouTubers. Yeah, from Bush Nugget, grifty YouTuber. So, but there's a couple of these comments that kind of compare the 857 to a G90, which is ludicrous at best. I mean, the 857 and a G90 are nowhere near the same quality of radio, and neither are is anything else from Yezu. So, uh, so this comment right here is where I want to kind of wrap this up. I think the argument could be made that grifty YouTubers. Helped create the scenario by pushing folks to cheaper, low-quality Chinese radios for the sake of views and clicks. Uh, and this guy replies, and this is a good comment, Chinese radios emerged later, and they hardly match the AT, he, he means a, uh, FT-857. Maybe it's more to correct to say that the Chinese radios bloomed because the A-57 was pulled from the market. Eh, maybe. The A-57 discontinued reports seem to start around August of 2020. The Zygu G90 being talked about is from April of 2020. And he says, do not take everything literally. Okay, so comparing the G90 to the to the Yezu A57, it seems like you're trolling. And maybe you are trolling. And hey, hats off to you. Great job. Good, great job trolling. But if you understand anything at all about these two models of radio, it's like comparing a 4x4 pickup truck to a uh, to a Prius. Okay, one is great for off-roading and one is great for gas mileage. And if you try to compare both the gas mileage or both the off-roading, you're going to be and say the the one that gets the better gas mileage is better on off road. You're going to be laughed at, really. So the fact that this this guy's uh, comparing the A57D to the Zygu G90 is is ludicrous at best. So here's my response. So of course he made a comment about grifty YouTubers right there, and I have I have to reply to it. So here's my here's my comment. Grifty YouTuber here. <laughs> this is good. I mean I, I say it's good. I, I, his comment was good. I think my reply is pretty good too, but let me know in the comments what you guys think. In all of my videos where I talk about Yezu compared to Chinese brands, I've always mentioned that Yezu is a better company and makes a better radio. The same goes for Icom and Kenwood. There's nothing on the Chinese market and never has been that compares with the 857D. The Chinese can't or won't make a 100-watt mobile radio, and they don't have VHF, UHF, radio, uh, an all-band VHF, UHF, HF radio at all. Comparing the G90 to an A57D or a 706-7000 is not comparing apples to apples. Rather than blaming YouTubers for this scenario, you might look at the common operator, the audience, the people watching the YouTube videos want to see. Let me give you a personal example, and I've talked about this example in several of my other videos too. When the Icom IC705 was new, I purchased one fairly early and made a couple of videos about it. Each video got a few thousand views and some really good comments from the audience. During that same month, I made a new video about a Baofeng radio, and I got 10,000 views in the first 48 hours. Why? Because I told the audience it was better than the 705? No. I didn't even mention the 705 of the Baofeng radio or vice versa. It's because people want cheap radios. The amateur radio audience is always commenting on how expensive everything is. Every time I make a video about something new. Every time. Every time. No exception. I challenge you to find an exception. You're going to have to dig through a lot of comments. 
which I'm not willing to do. Every time I make a new video about a piece of equipment, I don't care what it is, a radio, an analyzer, a power supply, go look at the comments on that last rig expert power supply I did, okay? Every time I vi make a video about something new, something with a hefty price tag to it, there's always comments, that's too expensive, that's too much money, that's too I could do that myself, I could buy one of these, I could build one, I could do this, oh, it's too expensive, too expensive. Well, you know what, and my comment, my reply to that is generally the same, I'm like, well, thank goodness no one's forcing you to buy this. I don't know if you knew that or not, but see, when I make a video and tell you about a product, it doesn't mean you have to go buy it. No one's forcing you. So, good. Yeah, some of the stuff is too expensive. I do agree with that comment. And I kind of throw myself under the bus with this uh, in this same comment here. I say, the amateur radio audience is always commenting on how expensive everything is. The Chinese listen to us, perhaps more than others do, and offer a, quote, solution, end quote, to those of us who don't want to spend much money, but want to complain about quality. Notice I said us in that statement. I'm including myself in this scenario because I am guilty of this in the past. I have been guilty of this in the past. Another example would be the Zygu 6100 and 6200, which if you know anything about those radios, the form factor looks almost exactly like the IC705. QRP radios, 5 to 10 watts each, a large screen on the front, Wi-Fi, wi Bluetooth, internal tune... Uh, I can't remember if those have a tuner. Yeah, they have the Zygu tuner, which the 705 doesn't even have a tuner. So here's a small package that looks very se similar to the 705 with an internal tuner, which the 705 neglected to put in their radio. Did the Zygu models limit the sales of the 705, or is the 705 still one of the most popular QRP radios in production? And I leave that as an open-ended question to this commenter. Okay, and here's the end-all be-all. Here's where I'm closing with right now. Here's... Here's my statement to you guys watching this video, everybody listening to the sound of my voice right now, and especially those of you who have a YouTube channel like I do. A good YouTuber will make videos for his or her audience, not for himself or herself. So if the audience is watching more Baofeng videos over Icom videos, how should the YouTuber respond to those statistics? I follow Gary Vaynerchuk. He does some uh, business how-tos, self-help type uh, videos. He talks about uh, building an audience, building a community, building YouTube, blogs, podcasts, whatever. And he says a lot of content creators are, are guilty of making selfish content. So in other words, what that means, what he mean, and he goes on to explain what he means by that. He's like, if you have an audience following you on YouTube and you're trying to grow a channel on YouTube, the way to, or a podcast or a blog or a website or some sort of community online somewhere even even a community even a local community you need to do you need to make content for your that your audience wants to see i could just make dmr videos all day long and just talk about dmr and never talk about d star or system fusion or p25 or anything else or the new m17 and you know at there was a point in time where i would have been happy with that i wouldn't be happy with that today but there was a point in time where i would have been totally happy with just doing DMR videos. But that's not what my, my audience was asking me about C4FM, Yezu System Fusion. I've got a lot of people that uh, comment about M17. I've got people talking about P25 and NXDN. I've got people talking about Pi-Star and mixed modes and all this other stuff, okay? So I started making videos about Yezu System Fusion, which I never really cared for. And th these days, I kind of care for it a little bit, a little bit more. Go watch my What is Wrong with DMR video. I'll kind of explain that. But I started making those videos because the audience wanted... Because, the, because of comments I was getting on other videos. So what are you making videos for? What are you... So if you're a YouTuber, who are you making videos for? I don't care if your channel has 500,000 subscribers or 5 subscribers. Who are you making videos for? If you're a commenter on YouTube, if you're a watcher of YouTube, do you watch Baofeng videos more so than the IC705 videos or the Yezu FTDX10 videos? And then do you go complain about how, well, these YouTubers, they're just pushing these cheap Chinese radios? Well, I wonder why. If I get 10,000 views on a Baofeng video 48 hours after I post it, and I get 3,000 views on an ICOM IC705 video 48 hours after I post it, which one do you think I should be making videos about? Which one are you, the audience, the audience as a whole? The audience as a whole, all of you. Which one are you guys responding to more? And what do you think I should be making videos about? Links to everything will be in the description below. 73, guys.